G'day everyone. I hope this video turns out well today because it's pretty windy. We've got a bit of a storm going on here. And um, I wanted to show you something pretty adventurous that I'm trying. You're looking at three citrus trees that I've had growing in my garage. Um, well, I say garage, but I have a clear perspex roof on it. And it's essentially a glass house. I've been growing these three citrus in there for the past two years. I've been getting some really good fruit off the satsumas, which are the plants to the left and to the right. And uh, the, the plant in the middle there is a um, uh, Eremocitrus glauca, which is the Australian Outback Lime, which gets a very small berry-like lime fruit on it. And I have only had flowers on that. I have not had any fruit. So I thought I'd just do a quick video uh, because they're just in the ground as of yesterday afternoon and I planted them in a position in my backyard that gets morning sun and this is probably the best position that I can think of to try and grow something as adventurous as a citrus in Ireland. Now the Satsuma uh, citrus unshu they are meant to be tolerant of some low temperatures you know it's, it's hard to put a finger on it but I guess to say in Germany, they say they can go down to about minus 10 to minus 15. Um, I think here in Cork, it's probably safe to say they could go down to about minus 9. Uh, in Florida, where that I was reading about them, they were saying that they could go down to, a, um, you know, even, even colder than that for brief periods. But then Florida will get more sunshine and have higher temperatures in summer than what we get here in summer in Ireland. So there's all these variables playing around together. And um, I think that these satsuma trees will probably just survive in our wet winters here in Ireland with the small bits of uh, snow and some frost but still um, I have hope and if I'm very lucky maybe we'll be able to get some flowers maybe the lime will also flower and then I'll get some cross-pollination um, I have a feeling that they're all requiring pollination from another citrus so that's why I've planted them in this, uh, w with a different variety in them between the two of them. Um, what I should probably point out is that this lime tree here, um, they're all on uh, trifoliate orange um, rootstock, which is a very hardy rootstock as well. Um, this lime has started to go very deciduous. It has lost a lot of leaves. It was covered in leaves and the leaves are also quite green. As you can see, it's basically just a bunch of branches now. So um, I'm very happy with the level of deciduous activity on this citrus tree. It seems that the rootstock has really made this tree, which comes from the outback region of Queensland, uh, which is very desert-like conditions. Uh, it, it looks like it's brought on some of that um, deciduous nature of some of those desert trees which actually go deciduous in extreme heat it looks like the rootstock from the trifolate citrus um, poncurious citrus has been able to bring on the dormancy so hopefully it will survive it's going to be the weakest of the uh, two different types of citrus that I've got going here and um, just trying to think what else I should try and talk about here so the next to a south-facing wall and that should hopefully contain some radiant heat for them. And I think we'll notice that these big leaves on the satsumas will probably get smaller and more elongated. Um, that's what happened last time that I, when they first arrived in pots, I had them out for that winter and the leaves were a very different shape. We had some big ones and some small ones. The lime, hopefully come spring, we'll get some nice new fresh growth on that and not too much growth out of the rootstock because I have a feeling this, these rootstocks are very aggressive. They might send out fresh branches branches if the, uh, the satsuma and the lime don't grow strongly enough. Okay, so I think that'll, that'll do for my citrus video today. Um, hopefully this will be the beginning of a few videos, but it really depends. These things could just die in one really bad cold snap we had this winter. Okay, thanks for watching.